Hi there, thank you for joining me today. We are in Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 25 and 26 here in just our short little bit together. Uh, before we get into God's word, let's pray. We praise you, O oh God, for your love, for your grace, for the work of forgiveness through Christ on the cross. We thank you, God, for the way that you change our heart. And as we're thinking about and pondering anger here in this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, I pray, God, that you would not only free us from the temptation to anger, but, Lord, that you would compel us when we do act out in anger to seek your forgiveness, and to seek the forgiveness for with one another. So, God, move and minister to our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus says this, come to, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Now this is in the context of Jesus talking about anger. You've heard it said of old that you shall not murder, but I say to you, anyone that's anger with a brother or sister is liable of judgment. This is eternal judgment. And Jesus goes on then and says that uh, don't go to the temple. Don't go to church. Don't go to worship. He says, if you are going to offer your gift on the altar, but remember a brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift, go be reconciled to them, then come back. This morning, in our passage here this morning, Jesus is describing the fact that when we have done something wrong, we've acted out in anger, and it's so bad that we might even be going to court to be reconciled to those around us, to be reconciled, to, to go through this process requires us to realize we've done something wrong, to repent that is to acknowledge that we've done something wrong and to turn from the wrong to the right. So to realize, to repent, and then to rest in the work of Christ. And that will lead to reconciliation. So Jesus here is talking about the urgency of this reconciliation, that we need to keep short accounts. If if we do something wrong, and, and we do, I do, if we do something wrong, our first instinct is to cover it up, to make excuses for it, maybe justify it even and say, well, they deserved it or I, I deserve to act or say in such a way. The first thing we need to do is realize that we are wrong. And then as we realize, repent and repent, rejoice in the work of Christ. And we must do this with haste. We must do this with quick. Don't let it fester. Don't let it sit but keep short accounts. The moment we realize and recognize that we have done something wrong, the best thing we can do is to go to that person. We can go to God as soon as possible and say, I am so sorry. I was in the wrong. You did not deserve to be treated that way. This does not honor God. Would you please forgive me? Keep short accounts. We don't have to run around as uh, a forgiveness obsessed people, but we do need to be those that are always attentive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit brings conviction to our hearts when we said something or we did, did something that is not pleasing to God to not wait, not delay, but by keeping short accounts quickly as as opportunistically as we can to go and to apologize and to seek forgiveness through the process of repentance. Keep short accounts. I think it would be greatly beneficial to our home lives, our uh, friendships in school, our uh, interactions and in workplace, even in our community and the world, if one, we would acknowledge our wrong, if we'd repent of it, but we wouldn't let it fester. We wouldn't make justifications. We wouldn't make excuses. We wouldn't ignore it, but we would deal with it by repenting, by acknowledging our wrong and doing so with haste. So let us keep short accounts. 
keep short accounts with one another. And so live at peace with one another. I'll see you again next time.